DEP Cabinet Secretary Austin Caperton recently toured the site with some local journalists as part of Governor Jim Justice's Save Our State campaign. The DEP's Jake Glantz was there and joins us now with the details. Greg, the governor's Save Our State campaign focuses on potential cuts to state programs and services if more revenue isn't added to balance the budget. While the DEP's Office of Abandoned Mine Lands and Reclamation is not funded through general revenue, it's a good example of how interconnected state government is and how budget cuts could ultimately affect projects like Broken Run. In the DEP's Division of Mining and Reclamation, coal mine inspectors are paid half through federal funds and half through general revenue. Cutting general revenue could start a domino effect that begins with layoffs or unfilled vacancies. Fewer mine inspectors would result in longer delays for permit approvals, which would lead to less coal being mined. Less coal being mined means less per ton tax paid to severance funds. And here's where that impacts the AML program. Office of Abandoned Mine Lands and Reclamation gets its funding from the per ton tax on mined coal. And that amount is matched through federal funding. That connection and its potential unintended consequences were at the heart of Secretary Caperton's message. We're at the mercy of the federal government in terms of getting funds for this type of activity. And with the current state of our state budget, where we're facing a $500 million deficit, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to grab state funds to speed up or do more work other than the federal dollars we have, work, have to work with. And another thing that's important to us, to, important to know, is that if we lose general revenue funds, which we take very little general revenue from the state, we take six and a half million dollars, and that's down, I think, over the past five years or so from 11 or 12 million dollars, give or take. If we continue to lose our general revenue fund that finances some of our inspectors that do other work, then it'll potentially divert away from this program. So we're really desperate to see the governor's budget and the balancing of the budget in the state of West Virginia. And we don't think it can be done just through budget cuts because we're going to have to cut vital programs. And we don't want to do that. As we've reported earlier, the abandoned mine lands program already receives substantially less funding than is needed to abate the thousands of hazards associated with abandoned pre-law mining in West Virginia. Every dollar received is critically important for the continuation of AML work around the state. That's especially true with the program scheduled to receive its final federal grant in 2021. What we're facing though as a state is, is the existing inventory. So the AML inventory as it exists today is, is close to $4 billion. So uh, between now and, and the end of our program, we, our annual grant is based on funding that comes in and that funding comes through uh, coal that's mined. So the more coal that's mined, the larger the AML grant comes to the state. So, you know, through responsible coal mining, you, you can, you know, produce jobs in the state as well as be able to fund projects like this. Secretary Caperton also toured sites in Martinsburg and Hinton to highlight the importance of the DEP's Large River Ambient Monitoring Program, a program funded entirely through general revenue. We'll have that story next time. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz.